Welcome back to Raid Guides in a Trench Coat featuring The Last Wish. The Cheesecake Factory. 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 It's the only place where I can still hear Asher Mir's sweet, sweet voice. You sully the sacred architecture of culture you cannot understand. You're so close, friend. My heart is yours. As the oldest Destiny 2 raid presently in the game, Last Wish has got so much residual spaghetti code that it could feed a family of six and still open an Italian restaurant on the corner. Subsequently, that restaurant would be so dysfunctional that Gordon Ramsay would have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to slap a band-aid on it just for it to be shut down six months later. As a result of all that spaghetti code, however, this raid has seen more cheese than any man, woman, or child outside of the state of Wisconsin. If there was a time that something in this raid couldn't be cheesed, only Pepperidge Farm would remember. Speaking of cheese, the first encounter is Kali, the Corrupted. The, in this context, as defined by Merriam-Webster Dictionary, as meaning one of many. Kali, Shirochi, this entire strike, Sedia, and those are just the ones from Forsaken. At one point or another, there was a cheese using Anarchy where you could trick her into visiting your plate and then use Anarchy to put an electric fence around her and kill her before the actual damage phase began, you might still be able to do that, I never learned how to do it, so I can't try to replicate it. This encounter is pretty easy though, so there's no reason to try and circumvent it with some stinky cheese strat. Just find a symbol on the inside ring, match it to one on the outside ring, and congrats, you've found your plate. That plate is going to be split into three different sections, where two of them will be taken with a pair of balls, and you have to finish the phallic imagery by cosplaying the old trouser snake on the empty section. Speaking of snakes, all of these symbols have snakes and do have names, but there are 12 other symbols you won't see for a while, so we'll revisit that later. Anyways, those taken blights are going to explode, and then two new sections will get taken blights. Stand in the empty one and repeat a few more times until a taken knight spawns. Kill it, and then head to the center of the arena where Kyle Lee will start to ready her main attack. Each of those plates you did will unlock a door. When she fires that weapon off, if you don't do a plate, a door won't open and somebody will die. Do a wrong plate, and even worse, an ogre will spawn and you'll have one less door. Back in the day, people were orderly about the door you took, as it directly correlated to your name's position in the fire team list. If you were first, you would go into the first open door as you read the entire wall of doors like a book. Second position goes us to the second door, and so on and so forth. But as time went on, well-versed LG frequenters came to the realization that nobody was going to the right door anyway, so you might as well just embrace the chaos door strat and use your reses as needed. It wasn't as though they were getting used for much else. The DPS check here is pretty easy, just commit to the third bout of damage, and if you don't do enough, run it back. The only problem with the abandonment of door counting is that it's only a temporary fix to the problem that is reading puzzles like books for future encounters. Shirochi, for example. Do a little jumping puzzle and secret chest action to arrive at everyone's favorite catalyst farm. Now I shouldn't need to explain the first 30 seconds of the encounter because everyone and their mother has seen how the Taken spawn and generally understands shoot ads until these almond nuts appear. The way this works in reality is that you'll need two groups, a group of three and a group of four. A little bit of critical thinking will tell you that that's too many positions for a fire team of six. The beauty is that players can overlap between these two groups, often to the point where the group of three is just the group of four without that one annoying member. You know the pair of group chats I'm talking about, and if you don't, it's probably best you don't think too hard about it. The group of three are the Nut Gamers. After killing ads, you'll pick up these nuts and each stand next to one of these floor as lava plates. Count down from three, or better, just shout go, and everyone will jump up and nut all over the player to their right until the boss's shield drops. Unload some ammo, and then more ads will spawn. After your second mini damage phase, you now enter the part of this encounter that's actually difficult. The four-person mechanic. If you aren't dealing with a mechanic, then you're on ad clear duty and also get screamed at when you don't immediately jump on a plate when someone else fucks up duty. On the floor, you'll see a 3x3 grid of plates. Then, on the wall, you'll see three images where one will be part of a fish or a snake or something, with four squares missing, while the other two will be completely blank. Number yourselves 1 through 4, and much like that numbered doors mechanic you didn't do, you'll read the 3x3 grid like a book and your assigned plate will be whichever numbered empty hole matches your number. Then, everyone needs to be on their plates simultaneously. The catch is that, much like the nut mechanic, the plates are lava and will damage you quite heavily over time. So, to not die, people have to jump on at the same time or drop wells of radiance to heal faster than the plates can hurt you. 
The even further catch is that if you get off the plate for any reason and try to jump back on, the plate will get angry and not accept that you jump back on it. Instead, you'll need to switch with someone else who also has not stepped on your plate in order to complete the mechanic. That no double dipping on plates rule becomes more important when, moving forward, you'll now have to look at a different image on a different angle, but the plates you can't jump on will remain the same. If you took the back right plate for the first image, you can't take the front right plate for the second image. If you took the top middle plate for the first image, you can't take the middle left plate for the second orientation. Confusing? Good. Call out for a switch with some other number you think you can stand on. Everyone will get confused, but somehow it probably may be work out, and multiple platforms will descend from the ceiling where it'll become painfully obvious who plays the class of their own and who's on their third character for the week. And if you're struggling with the jumps, don't worry. The platforms rotate. It does, in fact, get worse. Then it's just a rinse and repeat with two more mini damage phases, a new puzzle phase where all the plates start out unlocked again, and then two final mini damage phases. After killing Shirochi, follow your team to the second secret chest and then into this taken portal. If you thought jumping up three platforms that sometimes roll was bad, now half of the platforms are rotating all of the time. But complete that and you'll end up at the veritable Oprah of Last Wish Encounters. Everyone gets a job, and everyone gets a different job. Morgeth is another encounter that, like Kali, you generally end up having to do in one damage phase. While doing a second damage phase on Kali isn't all that hard to set up and execute, I don't think I know a soul alive who has ever successfully invoked Morgeth's second damage phase. Much easier just to burn him down. The general flow of this encounter is that there are these taken blights. You have to hold them so that Morgeth can't give them the sucky lucky, but if you take three of them, you immediately kill over and die, releasing your balls back into the arena. If the Taken Orbs sit out in the arena long enough that he gets enough suck, he wipes you, so time is of the Taken essence. As far as rules are concerned, we'll go from easiest to hardest. First in, last out. There is an orb that starts the encounter. Your job is to collect that orb, and then when another orb appears in that spot, you'll need to take it as well, which starts the damage phase. Top left. On the left side, you'll need to pick up orbs one at a time. As top left, you'll hang out on the platform up here and wait for your orb to appear. Bottom left. This does the same as top left, except on the bottom. Second right. Skipping first right, second right will have to wait for the second spawning of balls on the right side and will need to pick them up immediately. This is only marginally more difficult than the left side because you have to pick up two balls in rapid succession. First cleanse. As the easier of the two cleanses, hang to the right side and wait for the solar shielded eye of ribbon to spawn. When it dies, it'll drop a little ball that you need to pick up and bring over to the first right player who will likely be trapped in some swirling tornado of darkness. Run up right next to them and use your grenade button to cleanse them, taking their stacks as your own. As a note, this means that you now have, for all intents and purposes, picked up two orbs. You can't take a third, don't be a hero. First right. Synonymous with Second Cleanse, you are the workhorse of the team for this encounter. When the first two orbs on the right side spawn, you'll pick them up. This will force the boss to watch you and trap you in a swirling pit of darkness and despair, which the aforementioned First Cleanse will free you of. At that time, you will now no longer have any stacks of Taken Strength. As the second set of Taken Orbs spawn, you'll have to start sourcing another Eye of Riven because some poor random player is going to get stuck in the very same darkness vortex that you got caught in. You'll need to find them, Grenade them much like the first cleanse did to you, and then gear up for the damage phase. Damage phase from everyone will either be done with your backs against the door behind him, or with long range firepower from the rally flag. Shoot his boils until they boil over. Hop, skip, and jump on through the courtyard of the main tower to my personal favorite encounter Vault. Vault is an encounter so mechanically convoluted that the first team to clear it on day one managed to do so not because they figured it out, but because they kept taking their balls and dunking them on random plates, and unlike most Genshin Impact players, won every 50-50. True story. Nowadays, people tend to do the mechanics correctly. Players will split up into two teams, three people who know how to do the encounter, and three people who don't. The three people who don't know what's going on will each pick a side to defend as they watch the hieroglyphics scroll through their chat box. One person at stairs, one person at rocks, one person at trees. After the reading concludes, two of the rooms are going to erect massive taken barriers that you can't go through, but all the enemies sure as hell can. The defenders will want to stay outside of their room in the central map chamber and kill Az as they come through the barrier. 
The only adds that actually matter are the Taken Knights, whose sole mission is to prove that, unlike you three Jareds, they are 19 and do know how to read the mechanic. It's just a shame that their awoken to hive glyph translations tend to result in catastrophically explosive failure. The three people who do know what to do will have the far more complicated job. There are three plates in the middle of the room that will need to be stood upon to start the encounter, which will summon nine symbols that only the people in the plates can see. Because you'll need to call them out, you and your know-what-to-do partners will need to have an agreed-upon set of names. But getting two Destiny players to agree, let alone three, is impossible. It would be easier to convince a doctor that your WebMD self-diagnosis for sepsis actually has some merit. So, quite frankly, when it comes to symbols, it doesn't matter what names I say. The symbols are as follows. Suicide Bird. Bird on a Dick. Scoliosis Bird, Vanguard Surveillance Drone Omega, Sideways Sea Fish, H Fish, O Fish, W Fish, Vor Snake, Major Arcana 6, The Lover's Snake, Fork Snake, Cat Dog Snake Snake, Fire Dragon, Dragon Fire, Dragon Spear, and Spear Dragon. Starting from the Hostiles inbound at the steps, the reader will call out whichever symbol they see in their center position. For example, Stairs is Vanguard Surveillance Drone Omega. Someone else will respond with, Oh, that's on my left, I have Vor Snake, and there's a lot to unpack with that callout. First off, you're almost certainly in some random LFG group doing this fight with five guys whose burgers and fries have all but a single semitone of difference between them. There's no way in fuck that you know who my is, which defeats the purpose of the callout. The other nuance is that while three people pretend to know what to do, odds are the player who got put at stairs is the only one who knows how to translate what everyone else is reading. Because just knowing that stairs has scoliosis bird in the middle and rocks has scoliosis bird on the right does not tell you a damn thing when you have a rapidly ticking taken time bomb flashing the word Antumbra at you. I'm not convinced that Guardians need to shit, so they definitely aren't using that word of the day toilet paper Eva Levante gifted them at last dawning. There's some lore way to figure out what Antumbra and Penumbra were supposed to mean with how the symbols rotate, but because Bife is only one Guardian, he can't be in every raid team at the same time, so you'll just need to memorize it yourself. A callout on the left is Penumbra, and a callout on the right is Antumbra. I spent longer than I care to admit trying to come up with something funny for that, but it really just is stupidly bizarre. Now that all the reading is done, you still have to actually do the mechanic. When the big taken barriers come up, only one room will be open, which will indicate whose turn it is to take the trench run. When your side is open, find the solar shield to die a ribbon and steal its ball. And because no one seems to know, it's also a gun. For your crimes against Skyrim and her people, the vault will lock you into the room that the eye of ribbon spawned in. Now there's a strat where people use tractor cannon to boop the eye out of the map room before killing it so as to not get trapped, but we're all gamers here and have better communication skills than the soap opera relationship with my downstairs next door neighbors. When one door closes, another door opens, and lucky for you, there's a little tunnel to get you from point A to point B where you can escape into the map room to complete the last part of the mechanic. Have your teammates call out where that is. When you picked up the eye of ribbon, you got a buff that either says penumbra or antumbra in it. This will correspond to the left and right callouts. So if me said, I'm right, and you know that as the stairs reader you require the penumbra buff for your plate, then the antumbra ball has about a 66% chance of being able to be slammed at rocks. Which, honestly, not terrible odds. Walk up to the plate, make sure it's got this little flame doohickey that indicates it hasn't been deposited into yet, and deposit the ball. It won't be any of that press E to interact or press F to pay respects nonsense. No, this vault was built with everyone's favorite crucible handler in mind, which means You should be throwing grenades as I say this! Once all three of you have deposited onto your plates, you're one third of the way there. Hop back on your plates and do the whole thing two more times. Now I hope that little brain exercise was enough of a warm up because this next encounter is even more complicated. Riven of a Thousand Voices Just kidding, this fight hasn't been done legitimately since its second week. If this raid is the Cheesecake Factory, then the Riven Encounter is the chicken tendies and french fries that'll always be there for you even if they change the breading or the weapon strategy from time to time. The real kicker is that, like most current raids, the challenge mode win condition is satisfied by doing the raid as LFG intended. If you were to do this legitimately, you would drop down and split off into two different rooms and do some tentacle baiting or avoid fire breathing that I couldn't be asked to get any footage of because finding five other people willing to even entertain the notion of doing the ribbon legitimately is like one of those Discord scammers trying to tell you that they need your votes to win their CSGO competition and only you, random person on the friends list that clearly hasn't been messaged in years, only you can provide that crucial winning vote. So please, enter your username, password, credit card, expiration date, three numbers in the back, etc, etc. Look, I'm bad at reacting to the memes my close friend sent me in Discord DMs. There's no way I have the energy to click on your links. So instead of doing it the real way, everyone stands on their plates and then descends down to the blue gateway and runs into the room to look at the big TV looking thing. Wait around for the first spawn of Taken and do your best Punk's Zizwani fill impression. If there's a shadow, then bunker down for six more waves of Taken spawn in this room. 
If there isn't a shadow, then run on over to the Cheesecake Factory employee entrance and join your allies back at the top so that you can jump down to the room you weren't in and get ready to fight Riven there. Figure out whatever the weapon strategy is and either give her a really hack job manicure or enough lead-filled calories that she won't need to eat again for the rest of her life. After three or four wipes of missing the damage check, enter the final stand, a time-based jump puzzle littered with taken phalanxes that makes the king's fall dick wall look forgiving by comparison. Luckily, only one player needs to make it to the top and then utilize all of the party's reses to pick up those who fell a little short. Fire off the rest of your ammo into her mouth and then it's time to use the most effective bullets of all, yourselves. You'll need to force bore yourselves into Riven's mouth and down to her heart, which clearly isn't connected to anything inside of her body, so how the fuck does Ahamkara physiology work? There was a world's first track team that didn't know about that little piece of knowledge, and so they had to redo the encounter, earning them a 2402 final raid time. But the fun doesn't stop there. Welcome to Queenswalk, the final encounter, which doesn't have a health bar. At the start, Riven's dead heart will select a lover who gains sole access to carrying her heart. Pick up the heart and run forward. There's going to be a timer that counts down to the finite time you have left with her love before she consumes you and your feelings and you're left locked away inside of her heart never to be heard from again. No, no, that's actually what's happening. Look up. There are hands. That's the next love interest holding you. It's kind of fucked up. Anyways, when that timer reaches zero, you and everyone directly beside you will get teleported into the heart where you'll be relentlessly assaulted by hordes of Taken. A new love interest will be chosen, like she's trying to 100% her new Otome visual novel despite having less and less attractive choices as she slowly does the most appealing routes first and ultimately ends up with a character that everyone has to sit and wonder if anyone is actually into that sort of thing. I'm not King Shane and Riven, I just have questions. Anyways, the cycle starts again, only this time taking Blights will spawn inside the heart like with the Morgoth encounter. When all the Blights are picked up, the timer will reset and allow the lover to run just a little bit further before meeting the same fate of being brought inside the heart. The original lover has an important role as they must always pick up the final taken or right as the current love interest timer is approaching zero, something they'll need to be audibly counting down to. Okay, they don't have to, but boy it sure does make it less confusing because now with two players in the heart, two taken blights will spawn. When it's three, it'll be three, etc, etc, so everyone will pick up one but can do so at any time so long as the last one isn't picked up until the last second. On the outside, players will drop like flies as they fall for Riven's charms until the last player stands alone with the heart in their hand, nearing the finish line of the twisting and turning maze that brings you back through the vault encounter and towards the entrance of the big main and Woken Castle. Dunk the heart in this weirdly shaped pool and then the most important part, damage. Throw out everything you have. Supers, heavies, specials, melee, the heart can only be damaged by one thing and you have to find that out as soon as possible. If you don't deal enough damage or have enough damage types present between your party and it chooses one you don't have, then you're fucked. The heart will explode and you'll have to do the whole encounter over again. Otherwise, congratulations, you've completed the last wish. Take a spin on the roulette of raid chests that give you the illusion of choice in the drop that has already been decided. Go watch a real guide.